So after the shock signing yesterday for new AEW star Paul White, formerly known as former WWE superstar The Big Show, we have some new information about when to expect Paul White to make his AEW debut, reasons behind The Big Show's WWE departure, as well as plans for Paul White to wrestle in AEW and who his commentary partner will be in AEW going forward. So... Paul White will make his AEW television debut next week on AEW Dynamite. Tony Schiavone made the announcement last night on AEW Dynamite that their newest signing will speak live on TNT next week. Schiavone also noted that he'll be working the commentary booth for the premiere edition of AEW Dark Elevation alongside White when it debuts on YouTube on Monday, March 15th. Elevation is set to showcase AEW's established and rising wrestlers as well as top indie wrestlers around the industry. The former Big Show was announced yesterday to be joining the AEW roster uh, as both a wrestler and a commentator. But we also, as I mentioned, have some information about uh, the details behind the departure of the Big Show from the WWE. Now, as I mentioned, pro wrestling veteran the Big Show, Paul White, reportedly left the WWE after the two sides were unable to agree on financial terms for a new contract. As I mentioned, AEW has announced that White signed a long-term contract to wrestle and be a commentator for the new AEW Dark Elevation series that will premiere on YouTube next month. But PW Insider is reporting that White and WWE failed to agree on terms for a new contract last month, just days after he appeared on the Raw Legends Night episode on January 4. Now... It was noted that while at Raw on January 4, White was very open about his unhappiness with the WWE contract situation. It appears that the departure was finalized between WWE and White last week as the big show was officially moved to the WWE alumni roster page last Friday, February 19th. AEW announced more details regarding the signing of Paul White and Elevation during last night's edition of Dynamite on TNT. Big Show was a number one trend on Twitter worldwide yesterday, while White was also trending at number five worldwide. The Big Show's last WWE match came on the July 20th, 2020 edition of Monday Night Raw, which was a loss to Randy Orton. Since he has also worked only a handful of the matches last year and spent all of 2019, of course, on the shelf with a hip injury. He did appear, however, though, for The Undertaker's final farewell segment at the Survivor Series in 2020. He also appeared, as I mentioned... At Raw Legends Night back on January 4 of this year, Show first signed his WWE contract back in February 1999. He leaves the company as a Grand Slam champion, a two-time WWE champion, a one-time ECW champion, a two-time World Heavyweight champion, a three-time WWE Hardcore champion, a one-time WWE United States champion, a one-time WWE Intercontinental champion, and an eight-time Tag Team champion. Of course, he is the only man in history to hold the WWE, the WCW, and the ECW World Championships. He's also the world's largest athlete. And I did the video yesterday talking about it, and I don't want to go over too much stuff that I spoke about yesterday. So you can go to check that out, uh, the video that I did yesterday. But when I uploaded that yesterday, at the time, the story had just broken on social media. So I really was reacting to it the same way that I think everyone reacted to it on social media, which was an absolute shock. Just I could I could not believe what I was seeing because. The Big Show, he he just, I know he didn't start off in WWE and I know that he started in WCW, which is kind of why it feels kind of nice to see him coming full circle and coming back to TNT uh, all these years later. But he was really a WWE guy. He really was. He felt like a WWE guy. Every time you ever heard him talk about the WWE, he was a company guy and he respected and does respect Vince McMahon very highly, thinks very highly of him and calls him a father figure and all that kind of stuff. So it just seems crazy to me. It just seems so, so crazy that you see this report that comes out now that WWE couldn't come to financial terms for a new contract with him. It just seems bizarre. And the reason I say that is because look at what's happened over the course of the last few years. Every single time that a big star, whether they're a current wrestler, a former wrestler, someone in the twilight of their career, whatever, every time there's been an even an inclination they could go to AEW. Even the slightest thought possibly they could go to AEW, they get given this big, fat WWE contract and they sign with WWE. Look at The Undertaker. The Undertaker is a great example of this. 2019, it was in the Last Ride documentary, 2019, The Undertaker, his contract expired. For the first time, I think, ever, his WWE contract expired. And I think that Vince McMahon was looking at it as The Undertaker was winding down. He wasn't going to wrestle that much anymore. Whatever. For, for whatever reason, The Undertaker's contract signed... Uh, was 
the contract expired and that was that was that now i don't think at the time there was any chance that the undertaker was going to go to AEW or anything of that uh, likelihood because at the time AEW had just really been announced no one really knew what it actually was going to be if it was going to be a real competitor i don't even know if the tnt deal had been announced yet or whatever i mean it wasn't no one really knew what AEW was certainly not to what people know it to be now but Undertaker was announced for StarCast, wasn't he? He was announced for StarCast. That was going to be in Vegas. It was going to be around the time of the Double or Nothing event. And Vince McMahon and the WWE, they went into meltdown, into meltdown at the very thought of, is, is The Undertaker going to appear at an AEW event? Or just the fact that he was appearing at a, a fan convention that was linked to AEW was, was horrifying for them. So what did they do? They gave The Undertaker, a man at that point in time who maybe had five more matches left in his career, in his mid-50s, they gave him a 20-year contract on a ridiculous amount of money. And I don't, we don't know the actual terms of it, but a ridiculous amount of money. It's The Undertaker. They gave someone in his mid-50s a 20-year contract just because he could potentially, potentially appear in an AEW event. That's how scared or that's how much Vince McMahon was weary of AEW. And other wrestlers did it as well. Edge. The very reason that Edge is competing right now is because of AEW. It's there on the WWE Network. Edge, right, he does the spear uh, at SummerSlam 2019 and he gets a call from AEW and they say, look, we think he might be healthy enough to compete. We've got our own set of medical checks and practices. Um, go check with your doctor, see if you can get cleared. If you can get cleared to compete, we're willing to give you a shot. We're willing for you to end the career the way that you want to end it. We're willing for you to have a match. We're willing for you to have multiple matches if, you, if that's something you're interested in doing. And here's the offer. And they gave him a, a monetary offer and said, this is what it was. we would pay you if you wanted to come in. He go gets checked out by his own doctor. His own doctor said, actually, if you wanted to wrestle, you could. Edge says that back to AEW and they said, right, this is the money. You can come in and work for us. But Edge, in the same way that the big show, Paul White, he's a WWE guy. He owes his career, he feels, and the success of his career to Vince McMahon. So he takes that offer and goes to Vince McMahon and says, look, I've been cleared by my own doctor. AEW, they've also cleared me. They're willing to pay me amount of money. They're willing to let me work a match or a couple of matches. And they're, they're willing for me to end the career the way that I want to end it. And Vince McMahon realizes how dangerous this could be and says, well, okay, well, you know, uh, let's do it. If you're going to do it, you've got to do it for WWE and let's do this the right way. And lo and behold, Edge gets cleared, wouldn't you know it? And he's in the main event of WrestleMania this year. He got a very big contract as well. He won the Royal Rumble this year. That happened because Vince McMahon was weary of Edge going to AEW. And other superstars have done it. AJ Styles. Everyone knew the relationship that AJ Styles have, has with the people in charge at AEW. And when his contract was coming up in 2019, what happens? AJ Styles uh, negotiates with AEW. Eventually, WWE, they're worried. And they give him a big contract. The Good Brothers were exactly the same. We know the discussions that the Good Brothers had with AEW at the time. Because of that, WWE looks at it and says, oh, we need you, we need you. They give him big five-year contracts. They're not even with the WWE anymore. But they were that desperate to stop them going to AEW that they gave him big contracts. So given all of that has happened over the course of the last few years, and given the fact that WWE was offering out big contracts to people to pay them to sit at home rather than go to AEW... It seems crazy, crazy that they couldn't come to financial terms for a new contract with someone like The Big Show. Because The Big Show, Paul White, yes, he's probably at the, the end of his career. Yes, he's in the twilight of his career. But he's one of those names, and there aren't many of them around. He's one of those names that even if you're not a pro wrestling fan, even if you're not someone that has ever watched an episode of pro wrestling before, even if you're one of those people that's never even bothered to tune into the WWE or whatever, you know who that man is. You know who the Big Show is. You know who Paul White is because he is a living, breathing giant. He is the world's largest athlete. He is the modern day version of Andre the Giant. He's the next generation of Andre the Giant. So it's just, it's crazy to me that WWE would be willing to let someone like Paul White slip through their fingers or say, oh, we're not willing to pay you this amount. And if I was Paul White, if I was the Big Show, I would look at those previous examples that I mentioned. I would say, you know, I'm not the Undertaker, maybe, and maybe I don't have the comeback story that Edge does, but I'm, I'm definitely worth something. I'm definitely worth a lot. I'm the world's largest athlete. I'm recognizable around the world. I've been here for 22 years. I've done everything here, and I still do have a lot to give. And what, you can't afford me? You can't afford me? You've just signed like 15 people at the Performance Center, a new class. You can't afford to keep me under contract? That's madness. 
And it's not just that the pro wrestling side of things that he can offer, but we've seen the acting stuff that he's gone into. And I know the big show show on Netflix, whatever, wasn't a big hit or anything like that. But he's obviously got potential like that. And people want to work. Hollywood executives, movie executives, studios, whatever, they want to have the big show in their movies because... Think of all the villains, the giant people, or whatever he can play. He's a very unique person, and he does have connections in Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. So it just seems really, really strange to me, really strange to me that WWE couldn't come to terms with the big show. It's 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 crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Now, I know people that were, uh, that were raving about this signing and saying it's a really big signing for AEW, because it is. It's a massive signing for AEW. Just the exposure alone is massive, because again, everyone knows who The Big Show is. He was on SNL when The Rock was on there. And it's a really, really big signing, just said, for the exposure and to have someone that is a you know a WWE guy under their umbrella. It's a big deal. And I know that some people were saying, wow, every time The Big Show appeared for WWE recently, people would criticize it and people would say that, oh, he needs to retire, he needs to go away. Now you're really happy that he's gone to AEW. Well, first of all, I don't think I've ever criticized The Big Show for appearing for WWE or anything like that. I always felt when people shouted, please retire at him, I thought that was incredibly disrespectful. I mean, who are they? Who are they to chow this man to retire or anything like that? I thought that was incredibly disrespectful, especially for the stuff that he's done for pro wrestling and done for the industry. I think that's madness. I think it's absolute madness. Uh, but it's the reason why it, it's a big signing and it's a big deal is because, well, for a variety of reasons. One, because it's the big show. Two, it's like I said, it's the exposure. Three, it's what he can offer to the talent. He is the world's largest athlete. Even in his worst day, he is an attraction. At the very least, he's an attraction. But arguably, he's one of, I mean, you know, Andre the Giant's probably there. The Big Show is, I mean, right there. Because the Big Show, what he doesn't get credit for as well, Paul White, is for how great a worker he is as well. So for someone his size, for someone being seven foot tall and being this you know, giant and mythical human being he's he's an incredible worker as well so again i find it very 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 surprising that the wwe couldn't come to terms with that i don't blame paul white for being unhappy either because again i think he would look at those examples that i mentioned earlier and would say what's what's the difference what's the difference between them and me you're more than happy to give everyone else that says they want they're going to go to AEW a new contract and you can't agree on a new one with me that seems that seems ludicrous that seems ludicrous even at his age the, the big show paul white has a ton to offer and the very fact that everyone's talking about it right now shows how much he does have to offer so i again i find that very 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 surprising uh, and it's interesting to see who he will go up against in AEW. Uh, I don't know. People are talking about you know Chris Jericho, Jericho, all that kind of stuff. Are they going to reunite? I don't know if I necessarily want to see that. I'm more interested in seeing people that the Big Show hasn't faced off against before. The Kenny Omegas, the Young Bucks, the Darby Allens. I think that's interesting. I know people are going to say, well, actually, he did uh, actually have a match against, was it Matt Jackson on SmackDown way back when? But that wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't today's version. So... All of that, I think, is very exciting. I think the big men in AEW, there's a ton of big men in there right now, whether it's Lance Archer or Luchasaurus or Powerhouse Hobbs. There is a ton of big men right now that I think the big show can absolutely help mentor as well. That's certainly something to consider as well. Uh, and when it comes to the commentary side of things, uh, it's interesting because I think we've seen there that Tony Schiavone and the big show are going to be the commentary team, at least for the premiere episode of AEW Dark Elevation. Uh, it's certainly, I think, enough to hook me in or hook most viewers in for at least one episode, right? I think when it comes to AEW Dark, I've watched it on and off, if I'm going to be brutally honest, because sometimes that can be a really tough show to watch. Sometimes on a very rare occasion, but sometimes it has happened. AEW Dark's been longer than an episode of Monday Night Raw, which is madness considering Monday Night Raw is three hours long and AEW doesn't have any adverts. Yeah, it, it's it's crazy because I think this past Tuesday's episode of AEW Dark, they had like 16 matches on that show, which is way, way unnecessary. That is totally not needed to have that many matches on that show. And a lot of them are squash matches. I understand the necessity of having the third show. I don't necessarily sure if AEW need it, but I understand it because they've got so many people under contract that it was becoming a problem of how do you fit all of these talents onto Dynamite just for two hours on TNT every single week. I know the third hour's going. Tony Khan has uh, revealed that that still is going to happen. It's not going to be a third hour onto the show, but that, that show on TNT, that third hour, whenever it's going to be, is coming. That's not uh, what this was supposed to be or anything like that. But I think if you just labeled this as AW Dark Elevation, I don't know how many people would be truly interested in watching it 
given the fact that you've got Tony Schiavone and Paul White being the announced team, I think that's enough to say to people, okay, I'll give it a chance. So now it's up to AEW and the talent that's on that show to make that show work because I think the Paul White and Tony Schiavone announced team is enough curiosity to get people through the door to watch that show initially, but... What it's going to be, I don't know. It's certainly going to be interesting. The big show is all about giving back. If you listen to any interviews that he's done over the course of the last few years, you can't question his passion for the industry. This was at a point where Paul White, when he was in the big, when he was in the WWE, he would at one point only work live events. He didn't want to work TVs, and he said, "Because I just don't want to work TVs. I don't want to go through the bureaucracy of having to talk to this writer, talk to that producer, talk to that agent, this, this, and that." He just he didn't want to do that anymore. It was just. He was he was done with the mundane corporateness, if you will, of WWE. He was done with that kind of part of it. And again, that probably factors into the move as well. So it's interesting to see that he's been put in this spot. I think it's interesting to know what character he'll be doing in AEW going forward. Because I think, obviously, he's going to make his debut next Wednesday night on Dynamite. And I think it's no coincidence that that's the Dynamite that's got uh, Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet versus Shaq and Jade Cargill in there. We never thought... We would probably get the Big Show versus Shaq after it didn't happen at WrestleMania 33. Of course, it was the Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 32. Shaq was a surprise entrant in that. The Big Show and Shaq face off. They actually both get eliminated together. And then for a year, we were teased that the Big Show versus Shaq was going to happen. It was a lot for WrestleMania 33 in Orlando. And of course, it never happened. Now, why it didn't happen, we don't really know. Big Show and Shaq have sort of been... Uh, not really outright, uh, you know, explain what happened in that situation. I think they've basically come across and said that the WWE and Shaq couldn't really come to terms for whatever reason. But now, given the fact that Paul White's in AEW, you would think it's a slam dunk. I mean, <laughs> pun intended. Um, but it's going to happen, isn't it? Shaq's got the contract with TNT. They've got the NBA on TNT. Uh, Paul White's now with AEW. It's a matter of time. So obviously we're going to hear from Paul White next week. I would be very, very surprised if he doesn't get involved in that match somehow. Maybe it's, maybe it's an alliance. Maybe it's an alliance with Shaq initially and eventually we get that match. I don't know. But it feels like we're going to get the Shaq Big Show match, except it's going to be inside of an AEW ring, which is certainly uh, not what we thought would ever happen. But that's certainly very, very interesting. As far as what the Big Show is going to be going forward in, in AEW, I think the Big Show definitely does have one more run in him as the big dominating monster giant. I think, for me, that's always been Paul, when Paul White's been at his best. Obviously, throughout his years in WWE, if you've got that amount of tenure, you do have to evolve and you do have to do different characters. I mean, it's, at this point, a memeable joke, isn't it? The amount of times that he's turned babyface and heel in the WWE. But I understand the, ne the necessity to evolve over time. But I think the Big Show, Paul White, I mean, I'm always going to call him the Big Show, but Paul White, I think he does have one last run in him as that big dominating giant. That's always for me when he's been at his best, when he has been the dominating just destroyer. Because to be honest, if you think of it logically, and I know that logic doesn't really exist a lot in pro wrestling, but a lot of the time when he's facing off against opponents, especially smaller opponents, as a fan, you watch it and you say, why does this guy, how does this guy have a chance against this guy? I mean, he's seven foot tall. He's a literal giant. Nobody should be able to defeat him, right? So book him like that. And I know that might upset people because they would say, well, oh, an ex-WWE guy coming in, destroying all of this AEW talent. It's the same mistake that WCW and Impact Wrestling made back in the day. But Paul White's different. He's not, he's not like other people. He is a literal giant. And if booked correctly, there can be a lot of fun to be had with Paul White under the, the AEW umbrella. So if it was me, I would book him as the, the dominating heel giant, just destroying people in a couple of minutes. I always think that's the best way to do it. How does that lead into being, you know, a color commentator on AEW Dark Elevation? I don't know. That certainly would be a problem to overcome, I suppose. But the, again, the most surprising thing about all of this is that he couldn't come to terms with WWE for a contract or WWE rather couldn't come to terms with him for a new contract because for everyone else they have. And regardless of his age, regardless of how many miles he's got on, on him and how many matches he's got left, he still is an attraction. He still is the big show and he still is a massive, massive name. And every other time that a wrestler has flirted with the idea of going to AEW, WWE has coughed up the money and this time they hadn't. And for someone like The Big Show, that's really surprising to me. And I think it goes to show, and it should go to show WWE, that the threat of AEW is there. If they're not willing to offer them a contract, AEW will. Maybe they don't compete with WWE in terms of the viewing figures for Raw or SmackDown yet. They certainly do when it comes to NXT, but they should be weary, WWE, because they can and they will lose talent to AEW. 
So it's it's shocking. It's very shocking and surprising, but I think it's a good thing. Competition is always best for business and uh, it makes for a healthy environment, especially for the pro wrestlers themselves. So certainly a lot of information and interesting information when it comes to Paul White signing with AEW. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Paul White appearing next week on AEW Dynamite? The details behind the departure of the big show from the WWE and his commentary position with Tony Schiavone on AEW Dark Elevation. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about AEW, WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below, all opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. It really does help us out here on YouTube, go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.